Ready to dominate at the plate? Blast Baseball is trusted by more major league and college teams than any other hitting solution. The Blast sensor attaches to the knob of any bat, providing real-time feedback with every swing. Go to BlastMotion.com and enter code NOWD1 at checkout to save $25. All right, everybody, let's get right into it. I'm Alan Gay, and this is Now D1 Speaks. we got a great show today. We have got the head pitching coach at Walsh University, Coach Darren Ware. Hey, Coach, are you with us? I sure am, Alan. Thank you for having me. Man, thank you for taking time to be with us. Absolutely looking forward to our conversation. Maybe, maybe you can kind of get it started and just give us a general feel of your coaching background. And, and ultimately, Coach, what led you to Walsh University? Oh, absolutely. First of all, I want to say, Alan, thank you very much for having me on. I mean, this is great. This is one of the things that I look forward to listening to uh, on your show and and all the guests that you have. Uh, So I'm learning some stuff from you guys as well. So keep doing what you're doing. And again, thanks for having me on. Um, You know, I first got started. I mean, obviously, I played high school baseball. Actually, I went to a school in Florida called Florida Gulf Coast uh, Community College and uh, ended up at Walsh University. And, and played there. And as I got into the playing, I never knew if I wanted a coach or not, because I was always that pitcher on the mound, wanted to have that competition. And I just didn't know about coaching. But I got into high school coaching um, as I was finishing up my college. And um, I started off at a school around here, uh, Jackson High School, uh, which is a very good program. And I uh, was able to get my start there and enjoyed it, loved, loved the kids, loved everything about it. And then obviously I just kept on going and then uh, a job opened up. I took a head coaching job. Love that. Um, and as I was getting into my fourth year there, we, we had our first child, my wife and I, and I just wanted to be there for him. So I took a job closer to my home at Glen Oak High School, another prominent high school program here in, in Ohio in Stark County. And, and all of a sudden I just, I ended up loving it. I had some great players. I had some great coaches along the way to help me out. Um, really enjoyed it. And before you know it, uh, 24 years of high school coaching and loved every minute of it. And, uh, then all of a sudden, uh, I also taught uh, school, middle school for 25 years. And all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, this opportunity at Walsh university, uh, came to my attention. The coach reached out. Uh, it's a coach that I've admired, uh, looked up to uh, for, when, you know, when he coached me. And I've always went to Walsh baseball games to just kind of watch the watch my former team play. And um, and to be a part of that coaching tree right now, it's, it's phenomenal. I love it. And, uh, you know, it just seemed like the right decision to make. Well, Coach Ware, thank you so much for those kind words, man. We're very appreciative to have you on as well. And that absolutely means something to me to know that we've got great people like you listening on a regular basis. So thank you so much. Hey, let me ask you about your playing career. Um, Didn't realize that you were down in Florida to kind of kick off your college career. Are you originally from Ohio area? And, And if you are or in the Midwest, what ultimately led you to the opportunity to start your college baseball career down in Florida? Well, um, yeah, I am from Ohio. I'm, I'm from, uh, I was from, grew, grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. And um, one, of, one of the summer teams that I played on, we actually were playing in a tournament in Youngstown, Ohio. And Bill Mazeroski's son, Darren Mazeroski, um, was from the Youngstown area. He was up visiting, went to our tournament, saw me pitch. And um, I ended up going to Florida Gulf Coast, uh, played for legendary coach Bill Frazier down there and uh, played there for a year and then eventually came back up up north to play um, my college career at Walsh University where I graduated with a degree in education. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where, you know, right place, right time. Um, I was coming out of high school. I was getting recruited up to some schools around Ohio, but kind of like some of the other Ohio baseball players, we want to go down south and had a great opportunity to do that. Played for a great coach, learned a lot about the game, um, and uh, eventually came back up north and and played with uh, Coach Mead at Walsh University. Man, that is so cool. Thank you for walking through that. And, and now today, what does it feel like to be coaching at your alma mater? Oh, I'll tell you, Alan, it's it's uh, 
one of those things, it's a special, it's, and I think this is why I took this opportunity, you know, coaching or teaching for 25 years at a school and, and loving education and loving teaching and all that stuff. And I got to the point where my kids were grown and, you know, I, I always wanted to co- coach college baseball. And when my old college coach reached out, coach Mead and asked me if I would be, um, if I could take this position, I, I kind of jumped at the opportunity. I, you know, I sat down with the family first and, you know, we talked about different things and, and, uh, you know, it was one of those where it was like, this is too good to be true. You know, the, tra- the tradition, the culture, the opportunity, the experiences that I had being a player there, watching that team develop. Uh, and it was just like, it was, it was just a, a great opportunity for me. And, uh, I'm, I'm t- t- I go to work. I love it every morning when I get up and I, I go there and I see the kids and I work with those guys and, and stuff like that. So it's a, it's an awesome opportunity. I'm glad I've taken it. Absolutely, man. I'm so happy for you to have that opportunity and you can just tell it in your voice what it absolutely means to you. And I think that's so cool. I know that it has to translate over to the, to the, to the roster as well, the kids on the team. I think that's just awesome. Hey, why don't you kind of talk to us a little bit about last year and uh, maybe a, the, in particular the GMAC and just kind of talk to us a little bit about the team's performance there and maybe a couple of the challenges they faced as well. Absolutely. Like last year's team was special, you know, in 2022, uh, we won the GMAC conference championship and went to the regionals in 2023. You know, we were, we were very young. Uh, that's one of the obstacles. I mean, we had a starting third baseman who was a freshman, both our uh, graduated, both our catchers, uh, all three of our catchers actually. So last year we had two freshman catchers who basically stepped up uh, beyond belief and were phenomenal. And so their jump from last year to this year is, is going to be amazing. Um, you know, we had some injuries. Our starting shortstop went down. He tried to lay down a bunt. It ricocheted off the bat and hit him in the face. And, you know, he had some broken bones there. We had um, our, one of our players who was a freshman the previous year was a freshman, um, all freshman. Uh, and he ended up having some back in- issues and stuff like that. So we were a little bit beat up. Um, but I'll tell you, and plus we had a tough start for our, our front part of our schedule. You know, we went to Montevello, Alabama. We went to Seton Hill. Uh, some tough teams. We played them well. You know, we just weren't developed enough right there. We were still kind of learning the ropes. You know, our head coach basically was like, you know, don't worry about it. Be patient. Everything's going to click. And then after an 0 8 start, we went, ended up going 17 or 18 and 2. Um, and it was phenomenal. Um, you know, so. It, it, and I think the banner from the previous year is still fresh in our minds, Alan. You know, we have a 2022 banner, which we have guys on last year's team and this year's team that played on that team. So that that championship culture is still fresh in our mind. And, you know, we we want to keep that going. And those kids that are now juniors and seniors from that team are, are pushing the younger guys. And it is just an absolutely phenomenal culture right now. Man, I love that. A couple of things I would definitely want to talk about. Hey, freshman, the, the term freshman came up a couple of times. Third baseman was a freshman, two freshman catchers, obviously a critical position. Mm-hmm. Is it a, is, hey, is that the Walsh way? I, we're just absolutely going to put the best players on the field, regardless of uh, what class they're in? I, I would believe absolutely. You know, one of the things that I love about Walsh and what we do is we love to develop guys. Uh, we're not going to bring you in as a freshman, turn our back on you, and so that I can coach the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, or coach the guys that I believe only are going to be the guys out there, because eventually those younger guys are going to be put in those situations. So one of the things that we do at Walsh, which I absolutely love, like I said, is the development. Uh, we we really attack the fre- we really attack the fall baseball uh, season. Uh, we play a lot of scrimmages, inter squad scrimmages put these guys in situations you know we might say hey um you know guys on second and third winning runs at second base hey freshman here's the baseball go see what you can do let's see what you because you were the dude last year as a, as a senior in high school you were the guy um and a lot of times when we put those freshmen in, in that situation where they're used to it in high school they come to you know freshmen in college and all of a sudden it's like okay they're back they're getting humbled pretty quick they're they're understanding their fastball isn't fast enough. Their curveball doesn't curve too much. And, and, and all of a sudden now they're facing some really good hitters, one through nine. 
And it's a challenge. And, you know, the only way that we're going to help them is to develop them and to under, and have them understand situational baseball. And, you know, one of the things I also like is our freshmen from last year, we had uh, four freshmen, five freshmen starters or pitchers that came in and started off as relief guys, but then end up pitching conference games for us, starting in conference games, coming in in big moments in relief. So our freshman players, our freshman pitchers, they pitch and they pitch in, you know, their freshman year. And, and so then we try to place them in a good summer league in, in the summer so that when they come back as sophomores in the fall, man, they are ready to go. And it's, uh, and it's awesome. It is awesome to see that development going from year one to year four. It's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely. Thank you for walking through that. And I think that really kind of leads me into that second question. You know, I'm thinking about your championship culture and, and you brought up the banner from 2022. And you also talked about starting 0 and 8 in 23 and then just turning it around and finishing 17 and 2 or 18 and 2. Mm-hmm. What, what was it? And maybe it was part of that freshman development, but what what was it after that 0 and 8 start that really clicked that just put you on the path to winning on such a consistent basis? I think it, it, I think it, it is. I think it really is our tradition and our culture um, of our of our upperclassmen. Um, our upperclassmen, uh, you know, basically in 2022, you know, they were a year younger, obviously, and they won it. And they they realized that this 018 start is not who we are. So they they talk to the team. They you know, they I'm sure they had team meetings and, you know, they, they pushed each other and they challenged each other every day. And. Uh, you know, when you have a freshman leader come in uh, and, and and take over the infield like we had, uh, we had a catcher, uh, Eli Sutton, who, you know, when I first started, you know, I had we had in the fall, we had um, last year pitchers uh, conditioning at like six o'clock in the morning. You know, we'd come out there, we'd still be dark, we'd run. Well, the first time we had it, Uh, our catcher comes out and I looked at Eli and I'm like, Eli, I didn't know you pitched as well. And he goes, well, I don't coach. He goes, but I'm going to catch these guys. And I want to know what, you know, who they are, what they are, what they're about and stuff like that. So it, and he was a freshman and it was like, I have a freshman coming to a freshman catcher coming to a pitching conditioning just to see what his guys are going to look like and who he's going to catch. And, you know, who he's going to have to push. And it was phenomenal. I mean, so basically we just broke down. We, we, there's nothing we can do about those eight losses. What can we do right now to turn ourselves around? We ended up becoming um, in, in the, in the, our GMAC conference, the number one in defense. So we take care of the baseball. We average six plus runs a game. We can, we hit every practice and we, I mean, we hit, we hit, we hit. And then all of a sudden our pitching started to attack the zone better. Um, we really kind of came in. Our off speed started falling for strikes. We started hitting our spots. We we got outs, you know, and that's the that's the name of the game. You know, we weren't looking for strikeouts. We were just looking to get outs, and and we did that with our number one defense. So it was it's it it all came together, and we just took off. Man, that's an awesome culture, and I can't wait to kind of get into talking about recruiting just a little bit later in makeup, and it sounds like that's the perfect kind of makeup that you're finding in these freshmen, and I can't wait to really get into that. But before we do, hey, you talked a lot about the emphasis that's put on the fall uh, season. Well, you guys just wrapped up your fall. Mm -hmm. So how are things looking for the 24 spring season? Thank you for your support by listening to Now D1 Speaks. If you are a prospect or a coach and would like to be heard, please reach out to Alan Gay to schedule an appearance. The easiest way to contact Alan is on X, formerly known as Twitter. His handle is at now underscore D1. Now D1 Speaks is a great platform to be heard. We have had many prospects commit after appearing as a guest. Are you ready to commit? Contact Now D1 Speaks today. Well, you know, we had a, we had, I think we had a phenomenal fall. Again, we had freshmen, we had a, we have a big freshman class of pitchers coming in. And again, they were the dudes last year. And, you know, we talked to them about that and we kind of dabbled into, you know, it's not going to be as easy. What are you going to do? Cause none of, a lot of these freshmen, when they come into a college program, Alan, they don't, they don't play fall ball. And this is their kind of, you know, they play their summer season. They, they go, they play their spring season in high school. Then they play their summer season. And then their summer season ends in July. And then it's like they're done. Well, these college baseball players, these freshmen that are coming in, 
needed to prepare themselves because this is fall ball is where, where jobs are won. And, you know, some of them came in and you could tell that they were, you know, not as prepared. Some of them came in more prepared than others. And, you know, it was one of those things where they, it was, there's playing catch up and now they're throwing a lot more. They are, you know, than they used to in like say August, September, October, you know, they never used to do that. And now they're, they know what to do. And I believe that we had a good fall. We, we hit the ball. Like I said, we put them in situational stuff. Um, our weight room was huge. Uh, we have some great weight room. We, we work out four times a week. Um, we have a great strength guy. Um, you know, the development part of that is, you know, I took the pictures and, you know, we, we basically looked at this as a, a new approach for us. I brought into it and it was, it's, it's called the nine verse one approach. And instead of these pitchers realizing, Hey, I got to attack this hitter. I got to do this to this hitter. I got to, we talk about the nine verse one and, and this is a great opportunity and it's kind of the mentality that we have. So it's not, these kids aren't thinking about everything and it's just basically, Hey, I'm a pitcher. I got eight guys behind me, throw strikes, get ahead. So we talked about, we broke down uh, different counts uh, in the batting averages and different counts and how we want to get to strike two or strike two before we get the ball to, and what do we want to do on a one, two count and all this stuff. So the nine verse one approach said, let's take it all off on just me versus the hitter. Let's go me and my eight guys versus this one guy. I'll take that fight any, any day. It's hard to hit and uh, it's hard to get base hits. And so when we can focus on, Hey, just throwing strikes, making our pitches, and letting them hit the ball to our defense, we have a good chance. And I think that over through the fall started to develop and started happening. And then, uh, you know, we, we pushed each other in the weight room and things like that. So it, it was a tremendous fall. I think our guys got stronger, better, more confident. And that's all you can ask, especially for the young guys. Absolutely. Hey, I kind of want to talk a little bit about your son, Brody. I think he really had a cool experience in having the opportunity to coach him. And I'm just kind of curious as how that may have influenced your overall coaching approach. And, and maybe, you know, what lessons have you learned in, in being so closely aligned with your son? You know, it, it is. It's a, it's a phenomenal uh, situation. You know, it was uh, – I mean, I can't really explain it. It's, you know, as a dad, as the kids are growing up and he's, you know, you're the first one in the yard playing catch with them and you're teaching them stuff and playing. And now you, then you're his coach in little league and, you know, and all this stuff. And then he goes off to high school and now you're behind the fence and you're watching him play. And, and as a dad, you always want the best for your child, you know, and it's, and you put them in the best possible situations in order to succeed. You do all this stuff. And, um, and then you sit back and watch. And, you know, I was lucky enough that his, his last two years he's going to be with me as, as a pitcher. Um, and it's just a phenomenal. And, you know, just like anybody else, I want to treat every player as if he was my son. Um, you know, he knows that he's not going to get any special privileges. He's not going to, you know, get any reps off, nor does he want any. You know, he doesn't expect that. And so he pushes himself um, and he knows how I do things. And so when I'm talking about every player, uh, teach them, teach them the same thing. It's, you know, you want to build their character. You want to build up their academics. You want to build up them as a better baseball player. Um, you want to communicate with them and listen to them as if they go through problems and, you know, be there when they fail and fall, you know, be there to pick them up. And, uh, you know, and I do that as a, as a dad, you know, when I come home, I'm dad and it's, you know, we talk about things and make sure that he's doing okay and, and all those fields academically and, and all that stuff. And and when he's on the baseball field, he's he's one of my players. And, you know, and even, you know, behind the fence, you know, you when he's out there on the mound, you hope, you know, as a dad too, as you know, as a coach as well, but as a dad, you're like, man, I hope he has a good day. And and if he doesn't, you, you build on what you can do to make him better. And so it is, it's a unique situation. Um, I'm glad I'm going to be there for his, his last year of college baseball and see it through and, and stuff like that. And we'll be together and I'm sure it'll be a, a great emotional moment at the end. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Absolutely, man. That's a special, special, special opportunity. You know, not, not many fathers and sons are getting to uh, experience what you two guys are doing. I think that's really, really cool that you have that opportunity. Oh, for sure. No question. So uh, I would also kind of like to really talk to you or ask you about velocity sports and, and really what is it and what is your role within velocity sports? 
Well, I'm a I'm a pitching instructor there, and I have been for quite some time. I've, I've been a pitching instructor for probably as long as I've been a coach uh, in the, at the high school level and at the college level. And um, the Velocity Sports opened up by Mike Grady, uh, who does a phenomenal job of of preparing guys with his college VIP programs. He's got all kinds of high school kids coming in from all over Ohio. Uh, he also does a college VIP program where, you know, when they come home from at this time of the year, you know, and they're, and they're, they need to be working on things. He's got some great instructors and stuff like that. And I'm lucky enough to help out the, the U side of it, you know, the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 U players. And I, and I do, I absolutely love it. I just think that, you know, you teach them about life lessons. You, you, you teach them the responsibility, uh, the time management. So it goes a little bit beyond baseball when I'm giving a lesson to these guys. I talk to them about recruiting. I talk to them about the mental side of the game and understanding failure, which, you know, at that age, they, they want to succeed all the time. You know, and it's hard when they fail or they have a couple bad games in a row and, you know, what am I doing wrong? I'm not any good. And and some of them at the, at the end of 13, you know, 13 U baseball, they decide whether, Hey, listen, these guys are starting to throw curveballs. They're starting to throw a little harder. Do I, do I really want to play this? And those guys that stay with it and understand that failure is part of the game, probably more so than success. Uh, those are the ones that are going to work and you can see a tremendous side upside on these guys. Um, but you also teach them about understanding success, not, it doesn't happen all the time and you got to keep working when you're successful. I, I've been in the game long enough where you see this kid at, you know, every age, you know, every youth baseball player knows this 12U kid that was phenomenal. When he pitches, he's, he's the hardest kid throwing. He's the, and then all of a sudden when they get to high school, that, that 12U kid that was the best didn't work because he was always the best and he didn't feel like he had to work. And then all of a sudden you see these other guys passing them up. And so success is just, it's, you just, you got to be keep moving you got to keep moving forward even though you're successful you're always going to get chased and uh by other guys and if you want to get passed up that's your you know that's your decision but if you want to be one of those guys that are going to continue to be successful you've got to understand success and keep chasing greatness absolutely great life lessons right there and and just kind of thinking about yourself though and time management how are you able to balance coaching at Walsh University as well as providing pitching lessons? Seems like it'd almost be wearing you out. It, you know what I, you know, being a teacher for 25 years, Alan, and and be going to work every day and loving my job and and teaching lesson plans. And sometimes you teach a lesson plan and you have this great lesson plan planned out. And some days it goes beautifully, or even one class it goes beautifully, and then the next class, you know, they're scratching their head like I don't I don't get it. And it's the same thing here, you know, where I go to work every morning. I work with these college kids. And when, when I go to, this, go to this job that I love at Walsh University and, and teaching them in the morning, you know, we lift at 6 p.m. And, like, times like this now and where, you know, our, our, stu- our students are, you know, at home right now for Christmas break. And now this is my opportunity to, you know, teach the young who are – you know, just starting that process of getting themselves ready for their spring season or their summer season or whatever. And they want to come in and get lessons. You know, some, some parent or some grandparent gives their um, grandchild a, a, a free lesson or, you know, takes them up to velocity and, and chooses me to be their instructor. It's, a, I, I want to give it everything I have. You know, if I don't have anybody before them or after them, I always go extra time because I like to talk with them after the lesson, you know, what did you think? What did you think that you did right and good? And what do you want to work on? But, you know, I just try to find time. I try to find time to work with those young guys. Um, And to me, it's, it's a game that I grew up on. It's a game that my dad has taught me since I was young. And my dad always told me, you know, everyone has a story uh, and be the, you know, he told, he always tells me, be the one with the pen, you know, write your story. And so, you know, it's just my way of giving back. It's my way of even my even though my dad's not here anymore, um, it's it's a way that I still kind of connect with him. And I know how he was with me and, and, and players that he coached. And, you know, now that I, that I have this opportunity, it's what I can do for my players in college and what I can do for the young. Uh, and maybe they'll be coming up and through the system and maybe be a Walsh 
baseball player later on down the road. Who knows? But um, I just love that. I just love what I do. Researching college baseball programs should be easy. College Baseball Insights provides data-driven tools to help student athletes, parents, coaches, and recruiters make the best informed decisions when researching college baseball programs. Go to collegebaseballinsights.com and use referral code NOWD1-10 at checkout to save 10% on monthly, quarterly, and annual subscriptions. Time is precious. Reclaim your time with College Baseball Insights. Yes, you do. And I can feel it in every word that you're saying. I am so happy that you came on today because I got to tell you, your passion and enthusiasm. In many ways, I would think this was your first year coaching. I mean, you are all about it. And, you know, and I, I think here's somebody that's been a high school coach. I think you had said 24 years and now, now you've been had the opportunity to be a college coach for a few years. And and I mean, you just sound like you're you're as passionate today as you were 25 26 years ago when you got into coaching i love that yeah it's it is it's a it's a great opportunity and you know i'm a guy that always likes to learn so what i've learned over the 25 years with the coaches that i've come across um you know just the coaches in the gmac conference who've been there a while um just and being able to go to the abca coaches convention last year in nashville and going this year in dallas in a couple of weeks um and just you know hunting out coaches and, and, and just talking with them or reaching out on social media and, and, and having Zoom calls with them and, you know, hey, what are you guys doing? And some guy, you know, they asked me what I'm doing. We put, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the same format that I had years ago, but maybe it's different verbiage and, and stuff like that. So, you know, one of the things that we talk about is our work wins culture. And, and when I, when I mention work wins, it, it's not necessarily just all baseball, you know, it, if you want to be elite, you have to put in the work, you have to do all this stuff. And I just think that one of those things are, uh, it's not about the, the glove that you're wearing, the chains that you have around your neck, the, the bat that you're swinging, the tattoos, you know, that's all fine. And Danny, that makes you look like a good player, but you know, there's a lot of guys out there that, uh, that don't have any of that stuff and, and are tremendous players. So it's about the work that you put in, you know, and it, it, it translates to, like I said, off the field, you know, how, what's your character, you know, how are you going to be as a parent, uh, um, an employee, uh, a, a job owner, uh, you know, how about your health, you know, all that stuff takes work. And, um, you know, and it's just about the, the, the continued hard work that you put into what you want to do and what you're passionate about. And, um, and hopefully it comes to fruition. Man, I love that motto, work wins. And, and I love the culture that's behind it. And it sounds like that culture just continues to permeate Walsh University as well. And it really, just thinking about work wins and, and your history in the game, it really kind of leads me to recruiting. I, I know that when we were talking about Velocity Sports, you had mentioned that you've helped many of those kids in discussions about recruiting. And I can only imagine from your your high school coaching days, how many guys you were able to, to kind of lead to the next level as well or help direct. If, if you're, you know, kind of looking at the landscape of recruiting today, and it sure has changed greatly, you know, as, as you've seen over the last 25, 26 years, shoot, it's changed greatly just over the last couple of years. Right. What, what kind of advice could you really maybe give our core audience of uncommitted prospects and their parents to help them kind of navigate these very difficult uh, recruiting waters. Yeah. You know, and it's, there's, there's, like you said, it's changed tremendously. You know, I was lucky enough when I was playing that, you know, they had to, they had to come see you. Coaches had to come see you. Now they can go on to PBR site. They can go on to uh, the portal. They can go on to social media, Twitter, and, and see what, see what you're about. I still like the old school approach. I still, Obviously, I get names and get 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 people, and we get emails all the time. Um, but there's nothing like going to see the player. Um, I try to do that, and if I can't go see the player, it's I watch video after video after video. We study we study these guys. You know, we look at their character. Uh, we look at their academics. You know, we believe that you know what you do in the classroom translates to what you can do on the field. So. Yeah, it it's it's it has changed tremendously in that sense. So you know when we're looking 
uh, for guys, you know, I, I, what I would tell them is, is not to give up. If your dream is to play college baseball um, and, you know, it seems like there was a time where it was just, it, it maybe even seems that way now where it's kind of like it's a D1 or nothing kind of attitude in some of the players. Being at the D2 level, I can tell you there are some tremendous baseball players, great baseball players that probably could be playing D1 baseball. Um, it, and and if, you, if you're pushing yourself and, and you have that attitude where I'm open to anything, even like Juco baseball right now, uh, they are, you know, when I was playing, um, you know, it was, I don't want to say it wasn't imp- as important, but it was, you know, Juco baseball was for the guys that weren't academically sound. It was got for guys that couldn't get their grades up and couldn't go play at, at a school that maybe they could have played in if they had better grades. But now the, the, the coaches, um, the development process in Juco baseball, the, the transition of getting these guys ready to jump from a Juco to a division one or Juco to a division two or even division three. It, I mean, it is tremendous. The analytics and numbers, um, the analytics parts where you, now you have some guys, I, I would also tell guys don't chase numbers. Um, you know, numbers are great. They're important. Um, but also it's the development of getting stronger, being able to throw strikes, your mechanics, all that stuff. And, and all that little things are going to add up to those analytical numbers that, that people are looking for. But um, I just tell the, the, the players that are coming up, just keep pushing yourself, keep putting your names out there, study the schools that you might want to attend, learn about those schools, um, and, and, and make sure that, you know, you, you study what, you know, it's do you want to play i mean are you going to be a guy that's going to be satisfied with going to that school that maybe you just get a uniform and you you know don't get to play to your junior or senior or do you want to be a player that comes in and, and has an opportunity to make an immediate impact and a place like walsh is that place where we develop you as a freshman and we put you in situations you know and it and your playing time is obviously ultimately uh, on how you do I mean, if you're a guy that's going to continue to walk guys, it's going to be harder for me to put you out there. But I think with with our development program and how we kind of coach and how we do things, um, you're going to learn and and you're going to get in there and those opportunities and and play. So um, the the, the amount of talent that are in all levels right now, I mean, it's it's absolutely tremendous. It's it's a it's a great, great time for college baseball, for sure. Well, I got to tell you, Walsh University is absolutely doing it the right way, not only on the field, but in the classroom as well. And I think everything that you were just talking about really leads to big boy conversations is kind of how I put it. I mean, in many facets of your life, it comes down to more than just baseball. I mean, you and it always sounds cliche, but these decisions of where to go to school, if you have the ability to play baseball, really is a 40 year decision. It's not that four-year decision you need to be thinking longer term and I think uh, I think that's exactly what you're talking about in helping people to really prepare for that next level again coach Ware man I am just so happy that you have been on and that you've just taken time out to just to share your background and kind of share what it is you're currently doing and really sharing your vision as well I'm so excited for you I'm excited for Brody I'm excited for all the players that on your roster certainly and I'm very very excited for Walsh coming up in the 24 season. I just think you guys are absolutely doing it the right way. Well, thank you very much, Al. Absolutely. And I would like to ask you one last question. And it kind of goes along the lines of, of really what you were just finishing up. But uh, again, it's really just for young athletes and, it, and it's young athletes, maybe the age that you were talking about with velocity sports, where you're helping so many 11, 12, 13 year olds. If, if you've got somebody that's about to go to high school to kind of get to their next step and they're really, really good at baseball mm-hmm. and they want to be good for just as long as they can, what, what are some of the things that they could be implementing today that would really help them to be successful? Um, you know, one of the things that I would say is keep your academics in order. Um, academics is going to get you some money to, to go to those schools that you want. Um, take care of those academics. I mean, sports is a great thing to do in high school. It's something that you'll treasure for the rest of your life. Uh, you know, you get to bond with players and you get to experience the ups and downs and stuff like that. But uh, academics is huge. I say, you know, continue to, to work in a classroom, all that stuff. Uh, be a good character person, help others. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that, you know, just 
they want to f- they want to film or take out their their cameras and film fights. You know, be that guy that that breaks it up. Be that guy that kind of steps in and says, "Okay, we can't have this." You know, be be that good person. Um, and then on the athletic side of things, keep in the weight room, keep building up strength, uh, keep believing in yourself. Belief is believing in yourself is. is tremendous it's it's absolutely huge you know when you believe in something with everything you have you become a very dangerous opponent and i just think that you know when when you can believe in yourself and have the confidence in yourself even on those bad days um just to keep working and i know sometimes in this kind of realm of society that we have today it's what is the immediate reward i can get you know, I, I, I put in my time, you know, what, when, when am I going to see the, when am I going to see this? I've worked, you know, I, I've watched what I ate. When am I going to lose this 10 pounds? You know, all this stuff, they, they want this immediate reward and it's sometimes doesn't come that quick. You know, like, you know, we all want to be on the goose pile at the end of the season um, in the dog pile and stuff like that. And it's one of those things where it's not going to come in the first game. It's not going to come in the first week of the season. Um, but all those little things that you put into it, uh, you can be a big help. And I, I would just say, you know, the weight room, watching what you eat, being strong, um, academics, uh, I think those play a huge role. And, and just doing the right things, just in being surrounding yourself with good people. And that's another good thing. What great advice, Coach Ware. I mean, fantastic advice. And again, just thank you so much for taking time to to be with our audience. Absolutely appreciate that. And I can only wish you and Walsh University just the best of success. And I absolutely want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas as well. Save you and Alan. Thanks again for everything that you do. Thanks for having me on your show. Look forward to maybe doing another one down the road with you. And, uh, you know, again, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's, it's, it's awesome to listen to. Hey, thank you so much. And I'm going to keep you to that word. I'd love to have you come back. And I think with that, we'll just say good night. Hey, let me ask you something. Are you ready to dominate at the plate this season? Blast Baseball is the number one hitting improvement solution, trusted by more major league, college, and travel ball teams than any other. The Blast sensor attaches to the knob of any bat, providing real-time feedback with every swing. Metrics are automatically sent to a smartphone app, generating insights that allow you to analyze and improve your hitting like never before. Go to BlastMotion.com and enter code NOWD1 and you will save $25 at checkout. Unlock your potential with Blast.